Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Learning from the events of World War II, many countries invested in acquiring a fleet of aircraft suitable for operations on an aircraft carrier. For the U.S. Navy, however, this fleet has evolved from F-14s to F-A-18s and recently added F-35C. With a fuselage length of 62 feet and a wingspan of up to 64 feet. The F-14 is well known as one of the larger air superiority fighters, developed specifically for operation on an aircraft carrier. However, its predecessor, the F-15, is regarded as the most capable air superiority fighter of its generation, even to this day. It has an astonishing air-to-air -air kill record and can survive heavy damage caused to it by another fighter jet. The F-15 was designed to dominate the skies during the Cold War, but it was never originally designed to serve aboard aircraft carriers. Standing tall at 20 feet and with a wingspan of 43 feet, the F-15 is about 16,500 pounds lighter than the F-14 Tomcat with a similar load. On top of that, it has a relatively low weight-to-wing area ratio, making it more maneuverable than the F-14. Its Pratt & Whitney engines give it a faster top speed, easily outpacing the F-14 Tomcat's Mach 2.3 by around 150 miles per hour. Incredibly, all these features came at a cheaper cost to install on a newer aircraft than the F-14. With all these tactical advantages and impressive capabilities, there was no surprise the U.S. tried to land the 64-foot-long fighter on an aircraft carrier. However, a fighter landing on an aircraft carrier needs to rely on its hook for every landing. To do that, there's a special technique to slow down the aircraft during landing. known as the BAK-12 arresting system. This system is critical during emergency situations, and it was tested on the F-15 while landing on land. Interestingly, the BAK-12 is not limited to only fighters, but can be used on any aircraft with a tail hook. The process of using this special braking system is surprisingly simple. As soon as the fighter approaches the runway, it will drop a tail hook that will catch the BAK-12 braking system on the runway, safely slowing down the aircraft. The BAK-12 uses modified B-52 bliss brakes on either side of the runway, connected by a cable running across the runway. The hydraulic pressure in this system must be uniform to slow the aircraft at a consistent rate. The 
the BAK-12 system might only feed a cable across the flight line to catch the jet. But this cable can stop a jet traveling at 200 miles per hour. Apart from the BAK-12 arresting system, the U.S. Air Force also uses the Mobile Aircraft Arresting System on land. Known as MAAS, the system is actually a BAK-12 system that can move easily due to the installation of the MAAS trailer. This system uses a 1.25-inch diameter pendant cable, which is supported by 6-inch cable support disks. The cable is attached to nylon purchase tapes and runs the width of the runway. Despite being simple to use, the system has a great deal of flexibility. This is because it can be installed in multiple configurations and on different surface types. Before its application on land, arresting systems were extensively used on aircraft carriers by the U.S. Navy. Here, we can see these arresting cables aiding the landing of an F-35C fighter jet. Compared to the F-15, this fighter proves to be an ideal choice due to several factors. It has large wings, stronger landing gear, rugged structures, and can endure rough shipboard conditions. While on a ship in international waters, a fighter jet's ability to decelerate quickly is critical. This is because aircraft carriers lack a long runway to stop. With this in mind, the arresting gear system is designed to ensure a quick and safe stop as the steel wires grab the tail hook and decelerate the aircraft. The technology behind this deceleration is rather simple as well. As the tail hook engages the wire, the kinetic energy of the aircraft is transferred to the hydraulic damping system below the carrier. It is obvious that the arrested landing system is quite important to the U.S. military. Thus, the system is inspected and tested sometimes to ensure it is in good working condition. The arresting gear can be tested for its load spectrum capability and damage tolerance. It can involve visual inspection. And in many cases, the test can be carried out by testing the working limit of the cables using a pushback truck. The cables are arranged in the usual form and fed into the hook of the truck. Then the truck tries to move in some pattern that will cause heavy stress on the cables, just like an aircraft jet would do. and the resulting performance is analyzed. This will serve as the basis for subsequent maintenance or even replacement. This maintenance is critical for having confidence in the cables to stop aircraft from cruising at speeds of more than 200 miles per hour. There have been different instances of several aircraft landing of the aircraft carrier with the help of the arresting landing system. A 
Another variant of an aircraft that has attempted to land on the carrier deck with the use of an arresting landing is the U-2 Dragon Lady. This spy aircraft has a long, slender wing. And its wheels have an alignment similar to that of tires on a bicycle. Its design poses a big problem when landing because there's nothing to prevent the wings from hitting the ground except for the pilot's skills. In fact, landing a U-2 on a conventional airstrip is one of the most difficult tasks, even for the most experienced pilots. To improve its ability for a carrier landing, there had to be some changes to its design. Its long, slender wings are fitted with spoilers to reduce its speed and landing distance. In addition, it was equipped with heavier landing gear to withstand the force of carrier landings. This change was made to minimize the amount of vibration the cables send through the body of the spy plane during landing. The first, perhaps risky attempt to land it on an aircraft carrier was in 1964. Its landing experience was not entirely successful. This is because it tipped to one side of its wing and bounced on the flight deck till it came to a complete stop. Despite this effort, it never attempted a carrier landing again. Perhaps one of the most convincing ways of explaining the capabilities of the arresting gear system is when it was used to land the massive C-130 Hercules. This feat was achieved in October 1963. It was incredible that the 76,000-pound military transport aircraft, carrying several tons of payload, could come to a complete stop using the short runway on the carrier deck. During the test exercise, the C-130s completed 29 touch-and-go landings, as well as an additional 21 unarrested full-stop landings aboard carriers. Although the test program didn't ultimately result in C-130s operating off the carrier's deck, it proved it was possible. In doing so, it holds the record as the biggest aircraft ever to land on an aircraft carrier deck. A pilot may have up to 12,000 feet to land on an airstrip on land. On a carrier, however, they have less than 300 feet. This makes landing on an aircraft carrier similar to a controlled emergency crash landing. This is because stopping a jet moving 220 miles per hour in just a few seconds requires an enormous amount of resistive force. More so when the technique used only involves trapping the arresting cables to stop the flight before the end of the flight deck. Whether on land or a deck, it can be quite a difficult exercise. Despite the improvement of the system in recent years, the exercise still makes even experienced pilots nervous and alert about an arrested landing, which helps them remain precautious.
that's the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. And we'll see you in the next video.